Today we are reading Chapter 1 of Smart Dog by Vivian Van de Velde. Amy Prochenko had her walk to school timed perfectly. If she was too slow, she'd arrive late and get detention, not to mention a lecture from her teacher, her principal, and her parents, in that order. If she was too quick, she'd get there before her friends. Complicating things was the fact that the two or three girls she usually hung around with all lived far enough away that they rode the buses, which could be unpredictable. Arriving ahead of her friends wouldn't have been so bad, except that the very first person to get to school every morning was Caitlin Walker, whose mother dropped her off early on her way to work. Caitlin was the most popular girl in the fifth grade. Looked up to, fussed over, and imitated by all the in-crowd. Amy was so far removed from the in-crowd that Caitlin wouldn't talk to her even if they were the only two people in the room. One by one, fifth grade girls and boys alike would enter and gather around Caitlin and start making fun of Amy. That had happened too. So Amy preferred to go to school between five and seven minutes before the eight o'clock bell. People who were not from the in crowd for Caitlin to have a full range of targets. On this particular spring morning, as Amy walked to school, she was well within her schedule when she saw a dog sitting on the sidewalk. It was a medium-sized dog with floppy ears and big brown eyes and long fur that was equal parts brown and white and black. Excuse me, the dog said just as Amy was about to step around him. I'm in trouble. Could you please help me? Amy stopped, panicked, not because she was afraid, for the dog wasn't scary, but because she had no idea how to react. She knew dogs couldn't talk, but probably the last thing she would have expected a dog to say if it could talk was excuse me and please. She wouldn't have guessed that a dog would be so polite. Her family never had dogs, so maybe it wasn't fair for her to judge. But from what she had seen, dogs tended to eat out of the garbage cans, bark all night, and poop where people were most likely to step. None of these stuck her as indications of deep thinking. Yet here was this dog, speaking in a grumbly, barky, but easy-to-understand voice, asking politely and intelligently for help. She glanced around, although she already knew there was nobody else nearby and that, in any case, the voice had definitely come from the dog. Still, she looked, for she knew that dogs don't normally speak, politely or not, and she hated to appear foolish, even if the dog was the only witness. She saw she had been right. She and the dog were the only ones in sight, so she stepped closer and asked, "'What kind of trouble?' Are you lost? The dog shook his head, making the metal tags on his collar jingle. Just the opposite, he said. I'm trying to get lost. Amy checked the tags anyway because she didn't know where else to start. One was shiny red and had the date engraved. August 17th of last year. The other was unpainted and it was engraved with the number F32. What are these? She asked. The red one shows that my rabies shots are up to date, the dog said. This was good news to Amy, who suddenly remembered that the police officer who talked to her class about safety had warned her to never approach an animal that was acting strangely. She would have to admit that the dog stopping her and asking for help was strange. The dog continued, and the other one is my name tag. Amy flipped over the tag that said F32. On the other side was a telephone number and the words, State College of New York at Rochester, Research Department, Rochester, New York, 14619. She didn't think either side made a good name. Your name is F32? She asked. Yes, the dog answered. Definitely not a good name. Amy said, and you belong to somebody at the college? Again, F-32 shook his head, pulling the tag out from Amy's hand. He scratched himself. 
but discreetly, for a dog. I belong to the college itself, he corrected. To the research department, Amy thought. And then suddenly everything was clear to her. You're a science experiment, she guessed, which was the only explanation for why the dog was smart enough to talk. And your F-32 nodded. Running away, he finished. Yes. Will you help me? 